I was a, a near impossible match, you know. I took the one kidney in my world someone could offer my best friend. <sighs> if I have to look him in the eye and tell him I blew it. But you can't think like that. I can't help it. You won't know until we know. Used to think shoe salesman for my plan B. You have a thing for feet? What, deal breaker? I mean, kind of, yeah. There's no world in which a shoe salesman comes home at night and thinks about shoes. He goes to work, he deals with feet and weird people all day, but hell, so do we. Except, what's the worst thing he can cause? Blisters? Bad arch support? The job is the epitome of no harm, no foul. Plus actual vacation time. Used to think. What's that? You said you used to think that's what you would do for a living. That's just what I consider when a patient's lung craps out on me or the plane lands five minutes too late to recover an organ. But it's not the fantasy. No. So what is? Your turn. My turn? I'm just here to listen. No, you're not. I'm not? <laughs> no. OK. Well, there was one time when I thought I would be working at the multiplex with my best friend, Christina. but. That was just... Your version of shoe salesman. More like hospital-mandated therapy, but... <laughs> Ooh, now we're getting into the good stuff. <laughs> but you don't have an answer, do you? You don't know what you would do if you weren't a doctor. My dad took us out to the Boundary Waters, you know him? No. Oh. Right on the edge between Minnesota and Canada. These huge stretches of lake. You have to portage your canoes on your shoulders for miles. Every morning, my dad would take me out on a canoe. We'd be up so early, you could see the cobwebs reflecting off the reeds. And just dead, eerie, the incredible silence. My dad would get this look on his face. If I couldn't be a doctor, I'd go sit in that canoe until I felt him for a second, what he was feeling. Oh, you know what? Screw it. I'd be a shoe salesman. That's where it's at. Fewer mosquitoes, too. <laughs> Hey, it's your turn. I just got way too personal on a first date, so your turn. Excuse me. Joe Keeg, that was me making a joke. I am your doctor. Hey, thank God for that, right? Listen, the reality is, as soon as I'm good to go here, I'm on a plane back to Minnesota. Mayo's got my back. You never have to see me again. Oh. So it's a little deep, dark confession amongst friends. Okay. Um... Have you ever been to Sardinia? Sardinia. Mm. Nude beach on a bottle of wine. Hell of a party, excellent choice. So when I was young, uh, my girlfriend and I stayed in this tiny village. And I think we paid this woman like $2 to crash at her house and drink all of her wine. And she was 97. Her sister was 101. The neighbor was 99. And they grew their own food. And they wandered these little cobblestone streets with chickens to the beaches. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, did the, the chickens wander on the beach, or how's that work? No, with people, these incredible people who were laughing and fighting with the people they loved, and no one was in any rush, no one had anywhere to go, and they were happy. Oh, you want to go live with the chickens and the happy people? Yes. Okay. Me and my kids. And my sisters can come, because they can do the cooking and the growing, because, I mean, please. <laughs> And everyone's already living till they're 100 years old, right? There's no cancer or Alzheimer's, so there's no lives for me to save, and no one will die on my watch. Sounds pretty good, just me and my kids in a hammock and a stack of books that I'll buy with no intention of ever reading. Hmm. In this scenario, I don't suppose there's any room on that hammock for someone about your age, brilliant but not too brilliant, with one debatably functioning kidney. I mean, unless you want to lug a canoe over your head with me, because I'm game either way. Your laps. The what? Dr. Gray. Damn it. Tell me. They're inconclusive. Meredith. Um, okay, wait. <sighs> the biopsy is normal. Your blood work is showing a normal white count. What about my GFR? It's down. Creatinine? It's doubled, but you also have proteinuria. This says something isn't making sense. I can't leave my kidney, Meredith, please. There it is. You have a clot in your renal vein. We need to get him up to the OR right okay. now. Go ahead. 
nothing showed up in the ultrasound before. Why not? Because the flow to the vein is so low, but it makes sense. You were on that plane, you were standing in that OR. Any one of these could have caused a DVT to lodge itself in your renal vein. Let's go. Come on. We gotta go, guys. Meredith. Nick, listen, you need an embolectomy right now if I'm gonna save this kidney. Third drawer, green cabinet. Nick, I got this. No, 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 no. Third drawer, green cabinet. That's where the deed to the house is and the passcodes for Charlotte's college fund. She's gotta go to college. I don't care for what, but she's gotta go. She's kind and strong and beautiful, and none of that will matter if she can't string together a decent sentence. And tell her to stay the hell away from drugs. Her mother never could, and it ruined her. If she wants to drink, drink, but there's an AA book and a college folder, too, just in case. Tell her, Meredith. Stay with me, Nick. Tell her for me, Meredith, please. You're telling yourself. Let's go.